Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Welcome if you're new. My name's Tilly and today I'm going to be filming a weekly reading vlog. So the theme of this week's reading vlog is March subscription box, <laughs> a little bit of a mouthful. As you may be aware if you've watched any of my other videos, one of my goals this year is to keep on track with my book box subscriptions and I thought it could be quite interesting for me to vlog my thoughts on the March subscription boxes. So there's four books on my TBR for this week which is a little bit ambitious. If I'm honest I tend to read about three books a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. So this is slightly more than I tend to read but I think it is doable. First book on my TBR this week is the Kiss Countdown. So this is the Afterlight book for March. So we've got some beautiful edges there. This is a romance book with fake dating, potentially some close proximity and I believe the main love interest is an astronaut, hence the cover and the name. I will tell you more about the synopsis when I get to this one. The next book is the Fairy Loot adult book for March and that is A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine. This is an adult fantasy book all about Fae and I can remember when I looked at the synopsis it just sounds really interesting so I'm really really excited to give this one a go. Again like I said I'll tell you more about the synopsis when I get to it. Then we have the Illumicrate book for March and that is Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan. So this is a fantasy book full of water related mythical creatures. Again the synopsis sounds really really cool so I'm really excited to give this one a read. And then lastly we have one of my most anticipated books which is A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. This one is sort of Six of Crows meets Vampires so I'm Again, really, really excited. I think this is the one I'm gonna start with. So once I've started it, I will come back and let you know my thoughts. after work and I didn't actually get as much filming in as I wanted to because I actually spent all night yesterday editing and trying to get a video up for you guys as well as catching up on booktube. I don't know about you but Sunday for me seems to be the night of booktube where everyone uploads. I didn't actually get much reading done however I did read a little bit of A Tempest of Tea on my lunch break. I did only get to page 26 so I haven't read very much to be able to give you very many thoughts however I will say I did really enjoy those 26 pages. It's definitely giving me Six of Crow vibes. I really like our main character Arthi. I think she's very sassy and so far I also think it's quite cleverly done how they switch between the tea room and then the vampire drinking parlour and how they're able to sort of flip that switch because immediately in this they've been raided by the authorities so they've had to switch it over and pretend that it's not there which I found really cool. So we've been introduced by our main character Arthi and then her brother. I can't remember what his name is and there's also a aristocrat kind of guy who is a vampire who basically said that he knew where she came from so I don't know whether he's gonna be a little bit more in the story. I think he might be because he's actually on the Fairy Loot end pages. I think that's him that's depicted so I think he might be a main character so I definitely think he'll be popping up again. So plans for tonight I actually ended up working a little bit late as I was finishing a few things off. We've just gone to Tesco to do a food shop but I do really want to get a chunk of this bread tonight. Probably cook dinner and possibly watch a little bit of Married at First Sight Australia because I am definitely addicted but yeah I will come back to you once I have some more thoughts on this one. it's now Tuesday lunchtime and I read to page 157 last night and I have to say I'm still really really enjoying it. I know a few people have said that they haven't enjoyed it and I just don't understand why like I'm absolutely loving it. It's definitely still giving me Six of Crows vibes but I absolutely love all of the different characters and also we're getting into the planning of the heist so I don't think I explained particularly well what this book is actually about. So this book follows a character called Arthi Casimir so alongside her brother who's not really actually 
actually her brother. They just kind of grew up together and found each other after quite difficult things happened within their childhood without giving away too much. But yeah, Arth Tea and Jin came together and they created a tea house slash a nighttime business where vampires can feed on humans. But it's seen as more ethical because the humans can choose to feed the vampires or the vampires can get blood and things like that. But then when their business is threatened, but then Arty is presented with a solution, but it means she needs to put together a team of people to steal some plans from this really intimidating vampire secret society. And the bit that I'm up to, we've kind of then formed the group. And as I said, I love all of them. I really, really like the characterization in this book. You can kind of see all their different motives, but at the same time, they're all sort of criminals with their own motives. You know, is there gonna be lots of like, backstabbing or plot twists so I'm really excited to read more of this and find out you know what's gonna happen I know this book is a series so is it gonna end in a cliffhanger and then I'm just gonna be like wanting the next book massively massively enjoying this one and I'll update you once I have more thoughts I mean to be honest like I said I'm almost at a halfway point so I could probably finish this book tonight but we will see after work and I didn't quite finish A Tempest of Tea last night. I got to page 304 so I know I'm well over halfway so I know frustratingly I don't have long left to go. I was really hoping I could finish it last night but it was getting late and I knew I had work the next day but I think I'm on something ridiculous like 84% of the book so I definitely think I can get it finished today and then I'd possibly like to start a new book. I'm sort of umming and ahhing between Fathom Folk and A Feather So Black so I will come back to you and let you know which one I pick but in terms of my thoughts on A Tempest of Tea I'm still massively enjoying it really enjoying the writing style and the characters it does feel like it's all amping up and it'll be interesting like I say to see whether it gets wrapped up in this book or whether things are left unsaid we have had quite a major reveal which I did kind of guess because there's kind of threads hinted at throughout so I do think the author is quite heavy-handed with that reveal but I am still massively enjoying it as I said would highly recommend if you're thinking of picking this one up and you haven't already I'm just really pleased that I am enjoying it so much because it was one of my most anticipated books of the year and one that I was really really excited for but yeah like I said definitely we'll finish this one tonight our other plans are potentially to watch the new Fallout TV show I've played a small amount of Fallout before but I'm mainly watching it because my boyfriend Tim has played the games before and Fallout the TV show has had some really good reviews and it's been likened to The Last of Us which was an adaptation that I absolutely loved and I thought they did really well so fingers crossed I enjoy it I'll try and remember to let you know my thoughts and whether I'd recommend it or not. I kind of want these weekly reading vlogs to be a little mix of everything but I am very much finding my feet with them so please bear with me while I do. I actually think it's quite an exciting time when you're still finding your feet with everything because it's kind of thinking okay what do I want my child to look like? What kind of content do I want to do? So I am kind of enjoying that aspect and hopefully you guys are as well. But I'm going to stop rambling on, get on with my evening, I'll come back with an update if I finished Tempest of Tea, let you know my final thoughts, my final rating and I'll also let you know if I started another book. Hi guys apologies for the orangey lighting but I just wanted to come on here and say I finished Tempest of Tea. This continued to be so so good and oh my god I cannot believe that it ended in the way that it did on a massive cliffhanger and now I just need to know what happened. Have so Faisal why did you do this to us? Like I need to know what happens in the next book. Yeah like definitely a lot of plot twists and a lot of cliffhangers at the end. I feel like I'm just going to be really anticipating the next release in this series but we don't even have a release really state yet so yeah hopefully that comes soon as I may have mentioned in one of my other videos I used the corpile method to rate my books so the corpile method was created by a G over at books roast I always leave the link to a G's video on corpile in my description if you're ever interested to learn more about it however I'm sure the majority of you might already know what corpile is however if you're not familiar it stands for characters atmosphere writing plot intrigue logic and enjoyment so I thought it might 
be quite fun if I talk you through what I've rated Tempest of Tea and what the overall rating came out as. Characters I actually gave a 9. I think the characters in this are probably my favourite part. I love how fleshed out these characters are, their different motives, how different they all are. I don't think there's a character in the main crew that I didn't like or even didn't love. Like I think I love all of them. I really want them all to be okay in the next book and yeah they're just really likeable characters but like I say multifaceted they all have their own agendas really liked the characters within here atmosphere I gave an eight I think it had a really good atmosphere like I said it was kind of like the highest atmosphere it kept you guessing you didn't know what was going to happen so as I said I've rated that an eight writing I've given it an eight I think the writing style is really addictive really easy to follow I really liked the writing style and thought it was really engaging plot I've given an eight as well I think the plot was really strong I really liked how everything was kind of weaved together like I said we've had a couple of plot twists one that I think was maybe a little bit heavy-handed I think the overall plot the heist all of the intricacies of the world I think it was really strong intrigue I've also given an eight like I said it just kept me guessing I wanted to know what happens I wanted to know what the next thing was so yeah it definitely kept me intrigued all the way throughout logic I've also given it an eight I think the world building was fairly logical everything made sense I liked how they explained the different types of vampires that were within this I think all aspects of the world were really carefully thought out and then in terms of enjoyment I gave that a nine because as I said I absolutely loved this one would highly highly recommend I honestly can't understand why people don't like this book or I've seen really mixings online and I'm like how can you not love this it's so good I would highly recommend please let me know what you think if you have picked this up or you're thinking of picking it up I'd love to know your thoughts but that leads me on to my next book that I'm going to be reading and I've actually chosen to pick up A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine so as I said at the start of this video this was the Fairy Loot adult book I'm not sure if I mentioned but A Tempest of Tea was the Fairy Loot YA book for March so starting off with the Fairy Loot ones but I think these are the two that I was the most intrigued by I think it was between those and Fathom Folk I'm also really really intrigued by but I think I'm going to go with this one as my next read in terms of what this one is about um um, let's have a look at the synopsis. A Feather So Black is a sizzling fantasy romance set in a world of perilous magic and moonlit forests. Spinning a seductive tale of a changeling princess, her cursed sister and the dangerous fey lord she must defeat to save her family. In a kingdom where magic has been lost, fear is a rare changeling. She was left behind by the wicked fair folk when they stole the high queen's daughter, Ela. That's how I'm pronouncing that. When a hidden gate to the world of the fair folk is discovered, fear is tasked by the high queen to retrieve Ela and break her curse. But she doesn't go alone. With her is Prince Rogan, Ela's betrothed and Fia's childhood best friend. As the two journey into a world where magic winds through the roots of the trees and beauty can be a deadly illusion, Fia's mission is complicated by her feelings for the prince and her unexpected attraction to the dark-hearted Feylord holding Ela captive. Iria might be more monster than man but he seems to understand Fia in a way no one ever has. I do think it sounds really intriguing as I said in my April TBR. I'm getting obviously fey elements but also also multiple love triangles from the sounds of it and I am just yeah really really intrigued and it sounds really cool. This edition is also as always with Fairy Loot absolutely stunning. I mean look at that front cover and the edges as well as beautiful character artwork in the inside. I'm sure you'll probably see the naked hardcover as I'm reading this um, in all of my b-roll clips. I'm really excited to read this and share my thoughts with you.
happy Thursday, almost at the end of the week. So last night I got to a page 184 of A Feather So Black and I have to say unfortunately I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. I'm finding it very predictable and I'm finding it quite heavy handed. For some reason the mother is giving me major mother gothel vibes. If you've ever watched Tangled you'll get what I mean but yeah I don't know I'm just really not enjoying this one sadly. It's okay, I wouldn't say it's anything particularly fantastic. I did end up reading a little bit of it this morning so I am now on page 258 so I am getting there but to be honest I am skim reading it a little bit just because I'm not enjoying it as much. I do like the romance aspect of this. I think that's what's keeping me invested. I like the kind of love triangle element that's kind of hinted at in the synopsis. That seems to be quite interested although I definitely have a favourite. I think I definitely prefer the Fae over the Prince which is quite interesting but it's going to be really interesting to see how that develops and also how this ends because it is the first book within a series. I'm not too sure whether this is a series that I will continue. I guess it depends on how it ends and whether it keeps up the intrigue for me. As bad as it sounds I might be tempted to pick up the second one in the series and give it a go if Fairy Loot do a copy and it's absolutely beautiful and I can't resist. Maybe that will also convince me to pick up the next book but I have no doubt that I'll be able to finish this this evening so I will come back and I'll let you know my final thoughts. I'm hoping the final bit of the book really picks up for me but at the moment this is feeling like a three-ish star but yeah we'll see. Hi guys, I've just finished work for the day, which means it's almost Friday and I've just finished A Feather So Black. It actually picked up quite a lot towards the end. I do think the characters developed quite a bit and there were quite a lot of twists I wasn't expecting. And so I think I am intrigued enough to maybe pick up the next book in the series. We'll have to see how much it stays in my mind in readiness for the next book. But as before, I thought we could put it through core pile together. So character wise, I gave it a seven overall. I did feel like the characters did develop as the book went along and I did like the different characters and their different intentions and the reasons why they did things. The atmosphere I also gave a seven as I think there was a great atmosphere when they went to the fey lands and I think the whole earthy fey atmosphere was really prevalent throughout especially around certain powers that certain characters have so I think that was also really interesting. Also side note it completely didn't click for me that it's a Swan Lake retelling until I was watching this video of this guy who was watching all of the Barbie movies and of course he covered Swan Lake and I was and it just clicked and I was like oh my god it's retelling of Swan Lake of course it is. I'm gonna try and remember to leave a link to his video below because it's just so hilarious. The writing I did give a sit as I did feel it was a little bit heavy handed in places and I did find that I was skim reading a little bit so I have given writing a six. Plot I also gave a six as I feel like it was a little bit too long for my liking. I feel like they could have wrapped things up a little bit sooner. I did find it a little bit convoluted. Intrigue I also gave a six as I said it really just didn't hold my interest as much as I hoped it would although I have to say that definitely changed in the latter part of the book and I'd say probably in the last quarter of the book I was quite intrigued as to how it was going to wrap up. Logic I gave a six. I can see that probably there was some research gone in in regards to folk tales but I don't know like my gut is telling me that it was kind of like a six I don't know and then overall in terms of enjoyment I decided to rate it a seven. I, as I said I didn't love it. I think it definitely got better towards the end which is why it's got a seven but yeah I do think seven is a fair score. So that then came out as a 3.5 which I think is a very fair score for how I felt about this book. So yeah, like I said, it wasn't a bad book. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. And yeah, I'm kind of on the fence as to whether I pick up the sequel or not. So my plans for tonight is to do some editing, but I also want to start my next book, which is going to be Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan. And this one is the Illumicrate book for March. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at all of those edges. And the synopsis for this one says, Welcome to Tai Kwani, Shining Pearl of human civilization and a safe haven for those fleeing civil unrest or at least that's how it first appears but in the semi-flooded city humans are quite literally on top peering down from shining towers and aerial walkways on the fathom folk sirens sea witches kelpies and kappas who live in the polluted waters below for half siren myra promotion to captain of the border guard means an opportunity to help her downtrodden people but if earning the trust and respect of her human colleagues wasn't hard enough everything mira has worked towards is put into jeopardy when nami a know-it-all water dragon Fathom Folk Royalty is exiled to the city. When extremists sabotage the annual boat race, violence erupts, as does the clampdown on Fathom Folk rights. Both Nami and Mira must decide if the cost of change is worth paying or if Tai Kwani should be left to drown. I've always thought this sounded really, really interesting, so I can't wait to give it a read. And like I said, I will keep you updated with my thoughts and let you know what I think. Hopefully I get on better with this one, but yeah, I'll let you know.
update but I have just had a parcel come through from Amazon and I know it's a bookish parcel so I thought we could open it up together. So it's the new edition of Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is what the front looks like. It isn't sprayed edged but it is really pretty underneath the hardcover. So that's what the naked hardcover looks like and I just think it's really beautiful. And yeah I believe this is a colourway change. It's slightly more sort of pink and purple hued than the original. Hi guys, it's actually Sunday lunchtime. I didn't end up filming anything yesterday because after I finished work, I mainly spent the evening editing. We did also get a Nando's delivered, which was absolutely delicious. And I had a red reward saved, so it only cost us about £20 to get two meals, which was really good. And also they're doing a promotion at the moment where you get a free orange reward if you spend more than £20. So we'll also have a reward when we go next time. But I don't have much of a reading update for you. I got to about page 34 in Fathom Folk and I have to say unfortunately I'm not vibing with this one I'm not really enjoying it I think it's a little bit convoluted and I think there are too many characters and too many perspectives I can see from the author's letter she explains why there's so many perspectives but I just I don't know I'm just not feeling it I do feel like 34 pages in is maybe a little bit too early to DNF so I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a go and see how we get on but I'll come back and let you know what I decide to do when I'm a little bit further in the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was I got a Illumicrate parcel through the post I actually slept in really late today. I actually slept in to about 11 and I've actually just been watching Japan vlogs because we're really hoping to go to Japan next year. But I have also been waiting to see what this is with you guys so we can unbox it together. So instantly I'm seeing some beautiful artwork with such lovely gold foiling. I don't know if you can see a little bit behind me that I like to put some artwork above my desk. So maybe this one might be one for up there. But this is the Illumicrate version of the Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I mean, oh my goodness, look how beautiful that is. And then you've got lovely gold gilded edges. This is the back. And I'm imagining there's some character artwork. Oh no, it, we've just got some blank end pages, which is a little bit of a shame, not gonna lie, but I do think this is still an absolutely beautiful edition. And I'm really glad that I picked up this copy. I've said in my anticipated releases video, which I will leave linked down below if you are interested in checking that out, that I'm a little bit unsure as to whether this book is for me just because of the historical fiction element. I've only read the Shadow and Bone series and the Six of Crows series by Lee Bardugo. So I know this is a little bit different from that so it'll be interesting to see how I get on but like I said I really couldn't resist picking up the beautiful Illumicrate edition because yeah I mean look how beautiful it is. Hi guys I still don't have a reading update for you but you might have guessed from the mini ears that we have booked Disney which is so so exciting. So we're going in October which means we get to see all of the Halloween decorations and I'm just so so excited. It's the first time that either of us have been to America and that in itself is so so exciting to me. I know it sounds really strange to anyone American but I really want to go to a Target. I want to see all of the American snacks. I want to especially all of the Halloween snacks. I want to go to the American restaurants. It's also Tim's first time going to a Disney park. I've been to Disneyland Paris but obviously it's nowhere near as big as Florida so yeah I'm so so excited and I just wanted to come on and share that with you guys. <laughs> Tim and I have deep cleaned the house and oh my god it's so nice when you have a clean house. It definitely needed doing for a little while so yeah we've just literally deep cleaned everywhere and it looks all nice and fresh ready for the week ahead. In sadder news I got to page 109 of Fathom Folk and unfortunately I've decided to DNF this one mainly because I just wasn't vibing with it. As I said I just feel like the story is really convoluted. I feel like the author is perhaps trying to do a little bit too much. I do get that it's a story about oppression However, yeah, it's really not holding my interest. I did have a little look on Goodreads and it does look like a lot of people have also DNF'd this one and it hasn't been particularly popular or well received, which is a real shame as I really liked the premise of this one. And also the Illumicrate edition is just so pretty as well. So yeah, I'm a little bit unsure as to what I'm going to do with that, whether I'm gonna keep it. Chances are I probably will still keep it because it was because it is really pretty, but we will see in the future when I need the shelf space. So that means I'll be moving on to the last book of this vlog.
blog, which is The Kiss Countdown by Etta Easton, which is the Afterlight book for March. Again, this is a really pretty edition with a colourway change and it's got really pretty sprayed edges that you can see here. So yeah, I'm really hoping I get on with this one better. So the synopsis for this one, three, two, one, romance. Amory Price is jobless, newly single and about to be evicted. The last thing she needed was to run into her ex and his new girlfriend at her favourite coffee shop. Panicked, Amory pretends to be dating the annoyingly sexy man she just met. He plays along for a price. Half the single men in Houston claim to be astronauts, but Vincent Rogers turns out to be the real deal. What started as a one-off lie morphs into a plan. For three months leading up to his mission, Amory will play Vincent's doting partner. In exchange, she gets a rent-free room in his house. What Amory doesn't plan for is Vincent's gravitational pull. While her mind tells her that her future with this astronaut is too unpredictable, her heart says he's exactly what she needs. As their time together counts down, Amory must decide if she'll settle for the safe life or she for the stars. I do think it sounds really cute. I also think it will be a really good palette cleanser. I normally find that romance books are exactly that, a good palette cleanser after reading a lot of fantasy. So yeah, hopefully I enjoy it. I will come back to you with my thoughts once I have some. it's actually Monday lunchtime and apologies I haven't updated you until now. I ended up having a really nice Sunday spending time with my parents. We went out for a roast and then I spent the evening mainly chilling with Tim and we watched a bit of TV, watched some booktube, but I was feeling quite lethargic and just not in the mood to film. So apologies that I'm coming to wrap this up on a Monday morning. So yesterday I did finish The Kiss Countdown and I did really like it. I do think though that it wasn't anything particularly special when it comes to a romance. So I had rated it 3.5 stars. It was cute and a good palette cleanser so exactly kind of what I wanted and what I needed but like I say yeah not anything particularly groundbreaking. I really liked the fake dating element as part of this and I really like the family aspects as well so I would recommend this one if you are looking for a nice easy romance. So yeah a little bit of mixed success within this vlog. So we started off the vlog really well with a really high rating for Tempest of Tea which I really enjoyed and then a Feather So Black which I loved liked but didn't love. Like I say it got a lot better towards the end. Then we had a DNF sadly with Fathom Folk and then we're finishing off with a nice cosy romance. So yeah not too bad. Have you read any of these books? Please let me know what you thought of them down in the comments or are you excited to read any of these following my thoughts? Again please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise if you liked this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!